Emirates is an airline that I am very, very fond of, and while I'm here in the Middle East, it makes perfect sense to give them another try. Known for their long-haul flying, Emirates do also have a network of flights within the Middle East itself, so today I'm flying from Dubai to Kuwait on board one of their Boeing 777 aircraft. How much of a difference will there be on such a short flight compared to their long-haul routes? Let's find out. Welcome to Blake Edgington Airborne, let's get going. If like me you're flying from Dubai with Emirates then your journey will begin at the striking Terminal 3 at Dubai International, which has some subtle hints outside of which airline is the dominant carrier here. The check-in area of Terminal 3 is enormous, which may be a little unnerving for first time visitors, but it is also very easy to navigate with clear signage to help find your way. Luckily for me it was also very quiet during my visit, so within just a few minutes I was on my way to Concourse B via what I think is one of the coolest elevator rides of any airport. Dubai Airport welcomes more international travellers than any other airport in the world and like most major airports, the focus in departures is on shopping, eating and drinking, but the choice in Terminal 3 is on a whole other level to most. Here in Concourse B there is simply an amazing choice of passengers who enjoy airport shopping and while the Dubai duty free stores dominate, there is also a selection of outlets from other well known brands. food and drink are more your thing, then you can choose from a range of restaurants and cafes throughout the terminal to satisfy most tastes, and this includes a hard rock cafe which I know would be a must visit for three of my followers, Laura, Jed and Annabelle. But as impressive as a shopping and food is here in Terminal 3, my favourite part has to be the building itself which is modern and provides plenty of natural light. I also love the little details that you can spot as you pass through the terminal, and I'm sure that the basketball court in the family zone will be very popular. And that's Dubai Terminal 3. It's almost ridiculous, but I really am a big fan of this airport. There's just so much to do, it's unbelievable. But my time here is up, now let's board an aircraft and head to Q8. Since their first flight in 1985, Emirates has grown rapidly and today is the largest airline in the Middle East, last year carrying around 58 million passengers to 159 destinations. Apart from a single A319 executive jet, all Emirates flights are operated by the double-decker A380 or the Boeing 777 that I'm on board. 
This means that whether you're flying with Emirates for 1 or 10 hours, the experience should be fairly consistent. Now it's almost time to show you what to expect on board, but first, how much does it cost to fly on the 777? Well if like me you're flying between Dubai and Kuwait, Emirates offer multiple direct flights daily, and the journey will set you back 520 dirham, which is based on the lowest economy save affair. For this price seat selection is chargeable, but check luggage is included, so in my opinion it's good value for money. Enough about the money though, what can you expect from your Emirates flight? First of all let's look at the cabin, and this Boeing 777 seats up to 360 passengers with economy class laid out in a 343 configuration. Personally I'm a big fan of the cabin on board this 777 which is bright and modern with features such as images of sand dunes and patterns on the walls. The aircraft's also fitted with LED mood lighting and individual air vents which really adds to the experience and comfort in economy. Speaking of comfort, even on this short flight Emirates provide a pillow for economy class as well as headsets for the entertainment system which we'll look at later. Now this was a very quiet flight so storing my cabin baggage was no issue, with space available either under the seat or in the overhead lockers found in the centre and sides of the cabin. The toilets on board this 777 offer baby changing facilities as well as hygienic seat covers which is a nice touch, as is the use of products from the White Company who provide the business class amenity kits on board British Airways. On short haul flights with many airlines, economy class passengers will receive a small snack or even have to pay for something to eat on board. For Emirates though, that just won't do, and the cabin crew provided a meal that included an Arabic cold plate, bread and a dessert. It may just be a simple meal, but for me, things like this really set an airline apart from the competition. Well the meal service is out of the way, we're about halfway through the flight. Now let's take a look at the seat that you could expect to find on board the Emirates Boeing 777. As I was travelling on a save affair, seat selection started at 30 dirham for this flight, with preferred seats costing extra, but as the flight was nowhere near full I was able to move to one of the pairs of seats near the back of the aircraft. And like the majority of seats in economy class, the first thing that you'll notice is this enormous entertainment screen, which provides a great picture quality and some adjustment for a better viewing angle. There's a lot going on underneath the screen too. On the left hand side there's one of two USB power ports on this seat, which also comes with a controller for the main screen and a universal power socket so you'll have no issues keeping your devices charged. If you don't want to use the tray table then there is an individual drinks holder available which can be used to keep your drink secure and give you a nice feeling of space, but if you prefer the table can be used like on many long haul aircraft in a couple of ways, either half extended with just enough room for a cup or when open fully as you saw earlier there's plenty of space for the meal tray or even a laptop computer. The seat pocket has two different sections, here at the front is a pouch for the safety card behind which is the main storage area with enough room for any personal items that you might want to hand. The best thing about this seat though has to be the leg room which is incredibly generous. I'm about 6 foot tall and I wouldn't hesitate to choose this seat on a long haul flight. So clearly I rate the Emirates seat very highly, but let me know what you think in the comment section, I'd love to hear your thoughts. To pass the time on long haul flights it's always nice to have a range of entertainment available and when flying with Emirates, passengers have access to what is widely regarded as the best system in the world. As I've mentioned already, the screen on this particular aircraft was superb and the content provided on ICE is incredible with over 4500 channels on offer. As you might expect there's a huge range of movies to choose from which not only includes the latest Hollywood hits but films from all over the world. If you prefer you could sit back and enjoy the extensive music library on offer or watch your favourite TV show, many of which feature multiple episodes. I myself enjoyed watching some classic Father Ted which is still just as funny as it was in the 90s, and with so much entertainment to choose from the search function is a great feature. Emirates also offers live TV on board so that you can stay up to date with what's going on in the world of news and sport. There's also a detailed interactive route map available and like a number of features this can be enjoyed either on the main screen or on the controller below. As great as the entertainment system offered by Emirates is, nowadays staying connected is very important to many passengers and on this flight 2 hours of Wi-Fi was available free of charge. 
This means that when flying with Emirates, you can always keep up to date with my social media accounts where I share highlights of all of my travels as they happen, as well as updates on upcoming reviews. So if you aren't already, why not consider following me on Facebook, Instagram or Twitter, and of course, subscribe here on YouTube so that you never miss a video. So after a relatively short flight, we're making our final approach into Kuwait. Make sure to stick around to the end of the video where I'll share with you my final thoughts on the Emirates experience, but for now, enjoy the landing. And that's it. Thanks for sticking around till the end of the video. I hope you've enjoyed it so far. This, of course, is where I'll share with you the good and the bad about today's trip. And we'll start things off at the airport, Dubai International Terminal 3. It's one of my favorite terminals to pass through. I think it's a phenomenal place. There's so much to see and do, plenty of shots, plenty of restaurants. It is a massive space, but there's a lot to going on throughout. So there's certainly something to keep your attention as you pass through this terminal. Even as you'd have seen earlier on the video, they're setting up some sort of basketball court, which is out of this world. So I cannot wait to to pass through this terminal again in future. I highly recommend it if you haven't before. But of course, the focus of this video is the flight. And I said at the start, it'd be interesting to see how Emirates cope on such a short sector when generally they're known for doing long haul flights and they met every expectation I had, frankly. This was a phenomenal journey today. Starting off with the aircraft itself, I've flown on the 777 before, had a slightly older cabin last time. This one was much more modern and you could certainly see that from the seat. I found the seat to be very, very comfortable. The leg room was absolutely out of this world. Really, really impressive in my opinion. And of course, it's great to have in-flight entertainment on a short flight like this. And the Emirates Eye system, well, it's very well known as one of, if not the best in the sky. And I can certainly say that I agree with that. The food on board today's flight was quite surprising. I did expect a snack or something, but not such a large meal. And it was really, really delicious. I really enjoyed it. And I particularly liked the portion. If I had to make one criticism, I'd say that the pudding perhaps wasn't to my taste, but it wasn't bad by any means. But I really am nitpicking there. Speaking of the service, the cabin crew today, they were absolutely fantastic as well. Maybe because it was a lighter load, but I don't want to take too much away from them because I just genuinely think they were enjoying their roles today. They seem to be very engaging with the passengers, laughing and joking, really attentive as well, happy to answer any questions that I had. So overall, this was everything good about Emirates, and that's why they are one of, if not my favourite airline to travel with. Do let me know in the comment section if you've flown with Emirates before what your thoughts are on the airline. I'd really enjoy reading about your experiences. If you've enjoyed this video, do hit that thumbs up button. And of course, if you're new around here, please do subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss a future video. And as always, take care.